Hey everybody, welcome back to the basement. Today is a big one. We're gonna be talking about how to build the Union Pacific type roundhouse. And the first thing you're going to want when you have that is this manual. Today, we're going to be going through pretty close to a step-by-step -step as, as I built this. And I pretty much took a couple shots or a couple clips during each step of the process. I don't film the entire time I'm doing something. If I'm laminating windows, I might just demonstrate how I did one. And then obviously, you're going to repeat that step multiple times for all the windows that you're going to see in your roundhouse. I didn't hit every single step. As I was working on this, I might have forgotten to turn the camera on or whatnot. One thing to keep in mind, the best way to assemble this kit is by using the manual. I'm going to repeat that again here soon. I don't work for Altoona Model Works. I'm not sponsored by them. I purchased this kit at cost, just as any of you would. And I put this, I've made this video for you to reference. This is my method of going about assembling this. It's not the, it may not truly follow exactly what the manual says. I might have missed a step here or there as I was going through this. It's a very complicated process. So I just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. Don't come to me if you assemble it and mess, mess something up. That's that's on you. Make sure you're following the directions. Email Bob if you have any questions. He's great. I had to email him multiple times through this process just to clarify some things or ask a question. And he was amazing at getting back to me within a day so I could continue my build process. So he is your best resource, not me. But hopefully this can help you see what maybe you're getting yourself into. So before we get started, we got some things to talk about. Today, we're going to be going through pretty close to a step-by-step -step as, as I built this. And I pretty much took a couple shots or a couple clips during each step of the process. I don't film the entire time I'm doing something. If I'm laminating windows, I might just demonstrate how I did one. And then obviously you're going to repeat that step multiple times for all the windows that you're going to see in your roundhouse. I didn't hit every single step as I was working on this. I might have forgotten to turn the camera on or whatnot. Go ahead and use this as a tool, but make sure you're using that manual as well. That's an important step. Now, this took me a couple months to build. I started this in September, finished it up in late December. And there's some tools that you're going to need to get started. And that's what I want to talk about first. So these are not, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just some of the things that you should start acquiring if you're ordering the roundhouse. It's going to take a couple months for it to come in. It might take a year for it to come in, depending on how backed up Altoona Model Works is. So start acquiring some of these pieces now because they're, they're, they do add up. So... First thing you're gonna want are some of these blocks. I have I have four of these and I could have used more to be honest. So I would recommend probably six of these. And then <laughs> along with those, I also purchased one of these, which is basically just the same idea. It's a weighted 90 degree. So it's great for keeping walls plumb. Worked out really well for me. So I grabbed one of those as well, again, off of Amazon. You're gonna be doing a lot of sanding on that really fine laser cut basswood. So sanding blocks like this you can make one really easily i think i bought one and then i just have a bunch of sandpaper in my shop that i wrapped around some scrap plywood that i used in the future this i believe is 120 grit so th that worked out pretty well you're going to need some hobby knives you know these razor knives that you can get you can get a pack of these and actually i got a pack on amazon it came with three of these a bunch of blades and this cutting mat which was really handy so i'd recommend purchasing that if you don't have any of these or a cutting mat that would be a good place to start you're going to need a zona saw this is going to be really important as you assemble your trusses so it comes with a miter box typically and that's going to be used a lot during this build process so you're going to need that you're going to need some clamps when you're gluing the trusses to the walls and and so on so i've got i had a bunch of these quick clamps from when i was a kid uh, when i started my wood shop when i was back in eighth grade so i used these i also had some of these that i picked up from harbor freight years ago that i had in my wood shop as well picked up these these were you know less than a buck i think from harbor freight and then i've got some just some c clamps of different sizes as well these you can pick up from harbor freight for really cheap or buy them on amazon and then you're going to need these syringes. You can buy these on Amazon. They come with these needle tips. Now these aren't, these are pretty big needles. And this is what I used to put the tacky glue on to those really small, narrow areas when assembling windows. You usually get five syringes and five of the needle tips. Word of advice, when you're done using each one, there's a little cap that you can screw, unscrew the, the syringe and screw a blue cap onto here. So if I still had glue in there, I'd 
unscrew the needle syringe, screw in the cap. Then I had another syringe that was just in a, a like a solo cup of water. I would fill it with water and then put the syringe on there and spray it and then repeat that to clear out the syringe. Otherwise, if you let it sit overnight, that glue is going to dry in that syringe. You're not going to be able to get that out easily and you're going to waste it. You only have five unless you want to order more, but who wants to do that? So those are some of the other things you're going to need. And then at the end, when you start wiring, you're going to need a soldering station of some kind. So I've got this one here that I ended up purchasing. I actually had a soldering gun, but I wanted to upgrade it anyway. So that's what I did. And then when you get to the doors, you're going to need a hand drill. So this little guy is nice. You can put those really nice fine bits in it. And then it's got, you know, that spins. So you can kind of hold it in your hand and, and just spin like that. And it comes with a bunch of different bits this I got on Amazon as well, because who doesn't love Amazon? It's kind of hard to find some of these really, um, these are really modeling type supplies. And sometimes it's hard to find them at hardware stores. So that's always really, really important. And then the most important thing is going to be your manual. This is going to be your, your guide and uh, your Bible, if you will, as you go ahead and begin assembling your, your roundhouse. So Bob, who, who owns Altoon Model Works, he talks about a lot of the tools that you're going to need and things like that. So you can, uh, you can use the, Obviously, this is your guide, but uh, you, you'll know now some of the things you're going to need. Begin acquiring them. Honestly, as a, a modeler, you need these. I never had them, and now I'm so thankful that I do. I wish I had these for some of the other buildings I had built previously. It would have made, made my life a lot easier. And I have four now. I'll probably acquire another four over the next few years as time goes on. I'm looking at maybe purchasing another kit from Bob, and we'll do a build on that and announce that when the time comes if we get there. So these are some of the things you'll all right, so we're going to put some of this tacky glue, this Aline's tacky glue, into this syringe. I just purchased this off of Amazon. It's got a dull tip needle applicator um, and then the plunger. So what we're going to do is use this to apply the glue onto these windows once we get them cut out. So I'm just going to add some of this tacky glue into here. And we could dilute it if we wanted to also. Um, I'm not going to at first. I'm going to see how it goes without diluting it and see if I can get a good flow through this dull tip needle uh, to apply this. And if I need to dilute it, I can just add some water to the syringe later. So these, um, these laser cut parts here, there's some little tabs that um, are still attached when they're cut out. So you've got this whole frame. So I'm just gonna take my hobby knife and just, just cut those a little bit, um, laying it flat on the table so that I can pull these pieces out. All right, so we've got all of our pieces cut out and set out here if I turn the camera. So what we're going to do is for these big windows, and I pointed this out before, there's this scribe line here, and that's gonna be for the outer like sill. So this piece is gonna fit on there. We're gonna dry fit them first, make sure they're all lined up, okay? And if they don't, you know, we're gonna spin around and see if we can figure out which goes where. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bead of glue right down the middle here, and glue these on. Um, and then we're going to let them dry for a little while with some weight, and then we'll sand them down to make sure the uh, little flashing pieces there on the ends are cleaned up. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a, give that a try. What we're gonna do afterwards is I've got a micro brush here and I just bought this on Amazon, I got some water. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bead of glue down in the middle and then we're gonna take this block that, um, that Bob provides with the kit, we'll set that on top and then one of these little weight blocks. Give it about 45 seconds to tack up, pull that off and then we're gonna use this brush to clean up any excess glue that's squeezed out. We'll finish all of them, stack them, weight them down for a couple hours so they're nice, dry and tight. Okay, so this was been sitting for about a minute and there's some s s glue squeeze out down here. So I've got this micro brush that's it's wet. I'm just gonna clean up some of that squeeze out. There's not much, I didn't overdo the glue. It's enough to hold everything in place. And then, you know, we're gonna paint all this. So that looks pretty good. Didn't have too much squeeze out on that. So what I'm gonna do now, set this off to the side under a weight, and then I'll just continue to add more of these under weight as time goes on. So I'm just gonna set this over behind the camera here. If I swing this around, you'll see, I'm just gonna put this here. And then I've got some more weights or blocks that I can put on this. Now, this one's not that big, but it's gonna work for now. And then I'm gonna take one of these metal blocks. I'll set that on top. I'm gonna go cut some more of these pieces like this size of this half inch plywood um, as weights to weight that down and make sure I've got even distribution of weight over top of it. So I'm gonna go do that um, and then we're gonna continue up and do the rest of these windows and get them glued and then um, hopefully they'll be all set. I can let them sit overnight and then come back, sand them and then we can paint them red. So, so what we've done now 
These are all laminated. We sanded them down, just sanded the sides to make sure they're nice and even. Then we took some seal coat here. Uh, and what we did with this, we took seal coat, we diluted it in some denatured alcohol, about 30%. And then we're just brushing this on to seal these up. And then we're going to paint. After we get these painted uh, while they're drying, we are then going to the next step, which is to paint the upper side caps and window sills. Now, these are in these bags here. They're numbered and labeled, so we know which ones they are, which is nice. So we're going to take these out. Uh, we're going to sand them, just make sure they're squared up. So I'm going to use just a sanding block, and then we are using the Khaki Rust-Oleum, which is one of those camo colors. It's flat, so we'll just spray those, get them to dry as well, and then we can start dry fitting, which is going to be pretty cool. Out here in the shop, I'm taking the wood pieces here. Now, these are for the the truss frames within the roundhouse. These are already squared. Uh, I'm taking a sanding block here and just sanding them down to at least 220, just to really a quick pass, rotating on quick pass, rotate quick pass, just to smooth them down. And then we'll get these down and we'll begin cutting them to assemble the trusses one by one. And to do that, it is recommended to use type on two. Um, in my wood shop here, I've got type on three. So this is what I'm going to be using. It's, you know, it's waterproof into your exterior. It's going to be just fine. So this will be what I use. So I'm going to finish this, this piece up and then we'll get down to the basement and begin looking at the measurements that we need to cut these using the Zona saw. Out here in the shop, I've got my truss template set up with my stop blocks. I've got this first piece cut. I did decide to come up here. So I've got this extra piece. And if you look, because this isn't a square joint, we bring that up, it's not sitting perfectly flush so you need a the best way to do that as bob recommends is to have a disc sander and i have one out here in my shop so what we're going to do is i've got a really fine pencil that i use here when i'm doing things in the shop i'm going to kind of mark out what i need for to, to sand down and then we're going to come over here the shop is an absolute mess right now and i've got this old delta disc sander i have ordered 320 grit paper. I've got a little bit of grip left on this old one. So it's going to work a little bit for today. And then we can just kind of hold that angle and sand that down and then just go back and forth with it and see what works to get a nice snug, perfect fit. Cause that's what we're going to want. Once I've got that top fit snug, I then will cut the bottom. So we have a nice tight fit against that glue block down there. And then we'll glue that joint and we'll do the same thing for all these. And then once we get this first truss done, it's gonna sit here for at least an hour before we try to bring it up and then we do the next one. So this is gonna take quite a bit of time. I'm gonna to try to knock out one or two of these today and then um, it's just gonna be a work in progress. So as you can see, I've got some of these started to uh, glued up. So all the long pieces are glued. I'm working on these pieces here. Now, the tricky piece, the tricky part is, I mean, it's all tricky because it's very tedious. These angles aren't the same. Right, so you've got a 45 degree angle here. This angle is not because this this is you know a sloped roof. So you're gonna cut these with the, the miter box from the, the zona saw. So I'm gonna use 45 degrees, but then I have to make sure this is a little bit longer, cut that at 45 degrees, and then sand it down with the disc sander to get that nice snug fit, like you can see here. So it's it's tough to do, I'll be honest. Um, and then making sure your lengths are all correct and, and snug. I did add another block here because when I added this piece, it pushed this over. Uh, so, you know, if this is the first go, we'll see how, how this all works out and, and then we'll continue. So let's, let's keep working. So one thing that I've learned to, to speed this process up is I've labeled each of these pieces that need to be cut except for the main roof section here. And so I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I've done for my cross supports, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And so while this is gluing up, because this has to sit here for about an hour, I went through and cut out the rough lengths of all of those pieces. So that way, when I'm ready to come back and do my next glue up, it'll be a lot faster. All I have to do is go over to the disc sander and sand these top pieces to give it that that um, just off square um, cut, that off square cut there. And then same for these, these sections here. This is 45 degrees, this is not. So I've cut them all 
So if we look here at H, it is cut to 45 degrees. So I can put that there and then I'll come back and sand with the disc sander that top section to get a nice uh, snug fit there. And then that'll help speed the process up a little bit. So I've got enough now to do the rest of my trusses. I've got two finished, this is number three. And it's been here for about an hour, so we can start to pull this up. And it's just a little, some light tugs right at the joints. Just like that, it comes right up. So we can go ahead and set this over in the pile, and then we can bend again the next glue up. If you see here, while well, I've got you, there is some pull up there. So I pulled up some of the, the top paper on this hardboard. So I didn't have enough wax, so I just added some more. Now this is the third truss set that I've done. I'll probably put another thing of wax down, and then I'll do truss number four. Back out here in the shop, I've got a first coat of the flat enamel on the trusses. And what I'm doing is I'm taking some 320 grit sandpaper. And what basically what I noticed, and that's just the problem when you're working with these small dowels, you'll see the, the wood fibers there that come up. You know, whenever you add some, any layer of, paint or a liquid to wood, it's going to raise up those wood fibers. And maybe would have been beneficial to have sprayed these with some water before they were even assembled. That would erase some of those fibers and then sanded those down and then assembled them in hindsight. But oh, it is what it is. So here's where we're at. And so what I'm doing is just coming over and smoothing that out. So that inside, you see those fibers there. On the outside, I've sanded that down. So you can see a little bit how much more smooth that is. Um, you know, when you, when assembling something like this that's that's one piece that we could just let go so you know no, no one's going to see that which is probably true especially up in these areas but even on these long posts if, if i'm filming a video of a locomotive pulling in and out of the turntable you know you're going to have a view of something like this looking down the stall with the stall door down there at the end and so you're going to see these posts here and you want them to look as realistic as possible. So we gotta get rid of some of those fibers, smooth those out, so that looks a little bit more realistic for us. And it's, it's all about taking that time and that investment now, as opposed to rushing through and being disappointed in the quality later on. So I'm gonna be smoothing those out and then in some of these joints here, you can see where when you use the belt sander, it pulls some of the fibers off and then when it glues, you're left with something that doesn't look quite right. So we're gonna sand that down as well. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll throw another coat of light enamel uh, flat on here. And uh, and then we'll see where we're at. And if we're, we're ready for the black, we'll add the black to the bottom. And then we're going to weather them a little bit. And then we'll get ready for that assembly piece. All right, so I've got the second coat of white paint on the trusses. I have now have these marked off with painter's tape. These are an inch and a half from the bottom. And we're going to paint this section black. Because uh, when this flips over, you've got that black section uh, of the, the beam, the bottom before it turns to white. So we're gonna add that effect now rather than waiting until it's installed. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these with one more coat of white paint, just a light coating on the very ends, let that dry, and then I'm gonna apply the black. The reason why I'm going to do that is when you use the painter's tape, you wanna make sure it's nice and tight, but if you spray it with a little bit of the, the base color paint, what it's going to do is anything that seeps through is going to seep through as white, which is okay. And then we'll come back with the black and it's going to create a sharper line, uh, a sharper line there when we remove that painter's tape. That's the goal. So I'm going to hit it with some more white, then we'll let it dry, come back with the black. I'm just going to brush the black on because I just have a little sample can of black paint from the hardware store. And then we'll remove the painter's tape. While I am adding the other coat of white here, I'm going to take the rest of the dowel rods that I've got and these aren't really dowels, I guess, because they're they're squared. The rest of these wood pieces from the kit, and I'm going to bring them out. I'm going to spray them white as well, because we will need those to be painted when we go to assemble this on the table in the basement, because we have to connect all these trusses together with other sections. So we're going to paint all those white. The trusses well. are painted and drying. While they're drying, I am I came down here and I've traced out the base for the roundhouse, and I've, it's sitting just over there against the wall. So what I did was I set it down on this piece of MDF and I cut this MDF top to be big enough for this. I had had that measured. And so I've traced around it in pencil. I've also marked off the corner for each stall and then the very center for each stall as well. 
These marks are the pit in the middle. I just marked those just for reference. So I've marked those, um, I've marked the edges of each stall there on the front and the back. And the reason we do that is so when we, this is actually where we're going to be assembling the roundhouse itself. We're not gonna assemble it on the base because the base needs to get installed onto the table. And so we're gonna assemble everything here and then pick that up and move it and attach to the base as one of the last steps that we do. So this is done. I've got that traced out. Now, what I need to do is take some wax and I'm gonna put wax over this table. I'm gonna kind of cover the whole thing because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this white tacky glue, this Aline's Tacky Craft Glue. And that's what we're gonna to use to assemble the different pieces. So we're actually going to, when we put the trusses down, we're gonna put some of that tacky glue down and put the truss on there. So we're actually gluing it to this, this sacrificial board. And then what we'll do is we'll use some, a little bit of water and a Q-tip or so, or one of those micro brushes to loosen that glue up when we go to pull the whole assembled roundhouse off of this board and put it on the final roundhouse base. So the, the wax will help with the, uh, the, the wax will help us pull that off when the time is right. Just how I put the wax on the jig for assembling the trusses, same idea that we're gonna do here. So I'm just using a Minwax finishing paste uh, that I had in my wood shop. I'm sure there's other waxes that would work as well. That seemed to work really well for the truss piece. So I'm gonna do the same for this. We are now ready to put the windows in the side walls. So I have the directions here on page 11. Let's see, so I've got a shadow there, sorry. Um, what we're going to do is open these up. Um, these are both side walls. We're going to do the outside side outside window with the um, the sill, and then we're going to put the glaze on the inside also and bead that in. Uh, and then what we'll do is let that dry before we do the inside. So we've got four windows. We're going to try to do both out exterior walls at the same time here using a thin bead of glue. We're going to use the syringe. Uh, and we'll get the needle applicator out also for that. So I gotta get some of my supplies back out here as I've been taking a little break from working on this the past couple weeks. So we'll get that stuff out and start gluing this up. So sidewall is now here. We've got these sills that have been painted with Krylon khaki. We're gonna CA these into place first and then let them dry so that won't take too long. And then we're gonna come back with the needle point of the leans and do the glaze and then put the windows frame on top of that. These sit nice and snug. We're just going to put a bead of this right in here. And just so you can see, this is recessed in. Wide side down. So the windows are, are glued in with the, the glaze. Now what we do is we flip it over. This is the interior and we're taking the inside window piece and this is gonna get glued onto there to cover up the back side of that frame and then provide some detailing on the inside of the roundhouse also. So again, we're just taking our syringe here and uh, some of the uh, tacky white glue. And uh, you know, it's, you can either put it right on the wood here. I found it easier just to put it on the glaze. Always dry to fit it first. There's sometimes you have a little tab from where you cut it off of where it was laser cut. It doesn't fit nicely in there. And you don't want that, that right here that's getting hung up on this corner, not sitting flush. So we're gonna just gonna lightly sand that down so we can get a nice uh, tight fit before we glue it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and knock these out for all the windows. And then we will do the doors on the side walls also. They, are, they just got painted, so they're drying. They got painted with the PRR Caboose Red, I believe. And so we'll glue those onto the side walls also. And then we're getting close to beginning construction. So it is time to take this base, which has been sealed with the, the bullseye seal coat. I'm gonna take this can of camouflage flat khaki color from Krylon, and we're gonna get this looking like some concrete. So I've got a couple cans of this because I'm guessing it's gonna take a little, a little bit. We'll get this, take this outside. We're gonna spray it out there. We'll see the final product when it's all said all right. and done. We are ready to go. So this looks like a mess right now, but I've actually got a layer of wax set down around the edges here. We are gonna begin assembly of the walls. So I've got some quick epoxy. We're gonna be mixing up. We're gonna use some white glue. 
on the edges to stand up our walls and begin that wall assembly around the back. So this is gonna take a lot of time. I'm gonna just show some clips here and there as we go about it, but I'm just gonna to try to do my best to focus. Okay, so I've got started the wall construction. One thing that you need to have are these metal blocks to keep these walls plumb. One thing that I did is I went out to my shop and I, I made some of these 90 degrees, uh, 90 degree pieces with some plywood and I actually screwed them down to make it nice and snug to keep this wall plumb. And then that's going to just help make this process a lot easier because that's locked in. Even if you bump it, like these are screwed down, they're not going anywhere. So I'm using, I'm using a five minute epoxy because it's what I found. Bob recommends a 15 minute epoxy. Uh, one a couple of things that I've noticed that that what made this difficult. This corner isn't level. Okay, it even with it flat on the table, this was higher. So I'm gonna have to grind that a little bit down when we go to put the top piece on here. And what that did is then the brick doesn't perfectly align. And then as I was working, the tape pushed off on me. Let me focus that, and you can see where that that piece came out a little bit, which is a bummer. But we're gonna. We can make that work on the back end, I think. So I can probably get that to blend enough that I'm the only one that notices it. Of course, you all will know too, because I just told you. But either way, so these walls are are glued up and pretty much hardened at this point. I'm going to continue on. I've got two more back walls and then another side wall, and then we can begin doing the trusses. So we're out here in the shop. I've been doing a couple of things that I haven't videotaped. One is I've sprayed the base with the, the Rust-Oleum or the Krylon. I think I'm using the Krylon here. Camouflage. Uh, khaki gives a nice concrete look and then what we'll do is we'll weather it a little bit and I've got my first piece of track in here this was to test fit the length looks good so what I'm going to do is pull this out and I'm going to use it to measure these other sections here and I've got more out front what I did was I actually took these out front uh, to the front yard and spray painted them I use oh, this is a rust-oleum this rust-oleum camo color this one, uh, I'm not sure. It's, a, it's like a dark brown color. So there's a couple different ones and I actually have some more over here. So there's this dark brown, this green I use for some of my trees. This is more of a really dark brown or black and then a, the khaki. So I'm gonna use this brown. What I do is I spray the rails. You can actually see a good one here in this cut piece. Spray the rails and then I wipe down the, the tops of them before it dries. So you can see the difference side to side there. All right, everybody, we are uh, down here at the layout, obviously, over at the turntable area. And this is one of the last times that it's going to look like this. It is time, finally, for us to start tearing out some of our whisker tracks here in preparation for our roundhouse delivery. Shifting gears a little bit, what I've done now is I've torn out all the whisker tracks. I hope I have a couple photos that'll roll through here for you to see. You know, we can obviously see what it looked like before, but during that process, basically just ripped all that out. And I had to, you know, the turntable sits up about half an inch. So I had layered plywood underneath the, the previous whisker tracks and they all had to get torn out. So what I did was then I, today I went out and I got a big sheet of half inch plywood and with the base here on top out in the garage, kind of measured everything, got it cut, brought it down, used a just a piece of string to get that 28 inch, you know, curve or that circle for the turntable pit. And uh, you can see some pictures, hopefully that'll come up of that process. Brought it down, set it on the table, measured, uh, I, you know, made some more markings, brought it up, cut it up, cut it some more so we could get it to kind of fit in, you know, because we're, we are pretty close to this interior track. Then what I did was I went and I got the track pieces ready upstairs and brought them down, put them in, and then was able to slide the base just a little bit closer. It is a snug fit, and I knew it would be. Uh, I wasn't quite sure exactly how tight it, it was going to end up. And, and this curve is super elevated. Both of these are. So, you know, what that means is that track is tilted a little bit. And so I've got this big box car here because I was using that as a guide to see, you know, the overhang. Was it going to clip the corner of that building? And was I going to have to do something with this radius to bring this track out a little bit? I think I'm going to be okay just by the hair on my chinny chin chin. So we're going to keep 
the build process going without moving this track until I absolutely have to. I have lost a lot of ground cover and ballast through this process. You know, we've shop backed a lot of that stuff up and I probably could have saved some, but it was going to be so hard to pull apart. I've just decided to, I'll start fresh once that's all said and done. So I've got this plywood down. This is mounted to it. This can easily be unscrewed and brought back up. Uh, but if right now it's got uh, the tracks are all cut and they're right where they need to be. I will have to glue them into place once I know for sure I'm ready. I'm going to wait on that. We'll do some more weathering on this concrete as well. Probably add some more platforms to extend them out for some junk piles and things like that. But that is what this looks like. And I wanted to get this done so I can continue. I can put trains back on it while the rest of the roundhouse is continuing to be built. And I can work on getting that scenery back on here. So that was a big project for this weekend. I'm really proud that I was able to get that done. So we'll give a little update here. I've done some work on the header beams. So what we do is you put these header beams across here and then same at the peak here. You start with this one, these ones first, do these, these peak beams. And then you come and you do these ones here by the doors. And these are gonna support, these will support the upper windows here and then we'll have the door frames down here below. <clears throat> now this is tricky because if you have any sort of inconsistencies in your distance, you can't, or in the, the width between your beams, because you know, these things are gonna twist and bend a little bit. And when you do the tacky glue down here, it doesn't always stick. So what I did was I put some hard blocks in, I screwed them down to really keep these in place so I could get these in as square as possible. And it did take some time. And you're using a tight bond glue for this, an actual wood glue. So I use Type on 3 in my wood shops. That's what I used. Bob calls for Type on 2. Um, I think either one's fine. So that takes a little while to dry. So what I did was I you use your finger and just rub it on the ends of these dowels and stick them in place. And there's going to be some friction to hold them, but not all the time. And if you have this beam in and it's being held in with, you know, tension here because these beams are kind of pulling together. And then you put this one in and it's a little bit, just a millimeter longer than this one, it loosens that and it falls out. So one thing that I did, and, and this isn't in the directions, but it's something that I, uh, I chose to do, is I have this type bond instant bond, which is essentially like a CA glue for wood. And I've got the instant bond spray. So what I would do is once I would have this in, I liked kind of how it looked, I would just put a little drop of the instant glue there on the top and use a micro brush uh, let's see if I've got one right here. Use one of these micro brushes. Of course, this one's glued to this wood now because this is what I was using. To just smooth it out. And I'd spray it with that instant bond. And that would hold that in place while that tight bond had time to glue. You know, that instant bond doesn't give you a whole lot of um, solid strength and flexibility. The type, that the tight bond will. But it gives it enough to hold it in place while that tight bond can seal. So that's what I did. It worked out really well. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add the cross angle supports, which are going to go here in these locations here. And so if we look at the directions, pull these over here. A second. So it's from these peak beams. We need angled brackets here and on this side as well. And if you look here, we need to cut these at three and an eighth of an inch long, and then obviously at 45 degree angles to uh, get those in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little jig with my ruler. I'm gonna measure three and an eighth. I'm gonna put two blocks down so then I can easily measure and then mark it and cut so I can have a bunch of consistent cuts at three and an eighth, and then we'll use the little miter box here uh, to cut them on 45s. So I've got this little jig here. And basically what I do is I just glued these two pieces of scrap wood down. And so what this is, is I can put this piece of wood here and right at the edge of this is three and one eighth inches. So when I cut those at 45s, I then have just the right length to put these supports in place. So I've got a few here, and basically what I'm doing is taking these short cut pieces. I'm gonna cut it at 45 degrees, and then what I'll do is I'll stick it here. And I've just been using my hobby knife 
to mark right where that edge is. And then I bring that back in here and I cut the other 45. And so I'm just going to, I did this when I did the, the trusses. You just cut a bunch out at the right size. So then I can just glue, 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 glue and go right across. Um, I like getting all the cutting out of the way first. So I'm gonna do that. We'll get these glued in and then we'll head to the next step. Okay, back to the next step here. We are on page 18 of the manual. And so I have finished all of these cross supports here. I'm gonna carefully pan this around so you can see those in place. So if I put my hand over, you can see all those supports are all in place. I did have to support a couple of them here to get them glued up, but they're all done. So then we move on to the next step. So the next step in here is to do the, these front pieces here, that front um, fascia, if you will, that are kind of laser cut, and they're gonna go on the front where the doors are. Now, to do those, you need them painted first, and I don't have the paint yet. I ordered it about two weeks ago. Um, Minuteman Models, who sells the scallop coat that I purchased from, has been closed until, they were closed until Monday. So, I'm hoping I'll get that paint this week so I can get those on here. But currently, just for uh, timeline purposes, it is Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving's tomorrow, so I'm off work today. So hoping to get a lot of this done this weekend. That's why we ordered the paint two weeks ago. That happened to be closed. So we'll see if we can get that in. So we're gonna move ahead. So we're gonna turn over here and here's a section for front extension. We don't have to do that. So the next is gonna be the upper windows. So the upper windows need to be assembled. These are all laser cut. So what we're gonna do is there's a little window fascia and we're gonna bond the trim to the edges as pictured here. Um, so what we're gonna be using is the syringe again with the tacky white glue. And that's exactly what is described here. After the parts are bonded to the beams, um, glaze the back. So what we'll do is just kind of follow along. First thing we're gonna do is get these assembled. And then they will go up along that top section there, as you can see. So let's get these glued up a while. They, they also will need to be painted. So once they're glued, we have to wait for that paint to paint these pieces also. So I uh, figured we might as well glue it now while we're waiting for paint. So bag. So V55 is the version of the roundhouse. It's uh, 55 inches from the uh, so center of the once we table. have these here, these are labeled upper fascia trim. You can see on these where the laser doesn't cut to leave them in place. So what we do is I just take my hobby knife and I just scribe over that and then break it. You wanna be nice and flush against that window break it like that and then what that'll allow you to do is pull that up and out and if you stay as flush as you can you won't have to sand that because that'll be nice and smooth so let me show you that again on this bottom one so we find get the knife in the inside pushing against that trim to get it nice and flush i'm going to come over and once and then i press down come over again I have broken, I was doing this with the other windows. I did break a couple. So I tried to glue them back up as best I could. I could always email Bob and probably get some others sent out, but we were able to make it look okay. So there we go. So these are very, very fragile because they're very, very small. So we're gonna cut these out and then we're gonna glue them onto here. So what you see here, this orange is just tape that'll come off. Those are just, pieces of window that when they were cut out by the laser, they didn't completely fall off. So we'll just break those off as well. Here we are. And here's the front and the back. So we wanna make sure that we see that trim there in the front. What we're gonna do is this needs to glue and then it's gonna go right along that window, which is really difficult to do. I'm sitting down. I'm gonna stand up over top of the camera here if that's right in too many shadows. And uh, I'm gonna do this gluing here there's a really small bead is all you need because then we're going to paint these on top of one another that'll help seal it up too so what i like to do is go over it like that and then take a micro brush, which I get about a thousand of on Amazon for like five dollars. I'm gonna take an, one of these and 
I'm just gonna spread that out a little bit. And the first, oops, that's not what we wanted to do. The first time you go about doing that, it's gonna kind of soak into that micro brush. So you can put some on there. Just to spread that out. And that sits right on there, just like that. Not too bad. So we're gonna do the other three and then we've got a lot more to do. About five, four more to do. So let's go ahead and knock these out. We continue to move through the manual uh, because we're waiting. I've got the windows glued up here. They're gonna get painted later. What we need to do next, just kind of moving ahead, is we're gonna put more cross supports in. So these windows, these windows will get glued here, right? So they get glued there once they're painted. We will then need to put a cross support in, in front of those windows. Let me set this down so it doesn't fall and break. We're gonna put a cross support in underneath there that's going to support the back end of the roof piece okay so that'll just be another piece of this square stock i'm not going to do that until the windows are glued in place so i make sure that that support is in the right spot 